hello 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 everybody it's your girl ashley the amateur expert coming to you live today for this episode of talk tuesday so excited that you are here with us for another week and i'm more excited for you guys to learn and hear um, about marilyn's story so marilyn's in the room so we're gonna join uh, add her in if this is your first time watching the concept of the show um is to discuss Marilyn's career path, her idea of success when she first started compared to her idea of success now, um, and the tips and motivators she used along the way. So uh, let's get her added in. I'm super excited. Hey everyone, thank you guys for joining. Hey Sarah, hey Keelan, hey Hi. beautiful. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good girl, how are you doing? I'm so excited to be doing this with you today. <laughs> Don't make me blush, oh. <laughs> hey Tiffany, hey Tierra, hey everyone joining. Hi, how you, hi Petro Keys and girls. This is so much fun. It is fun. So Marilyn, um, we met in January in Aspen yes. um, at Arian's um, uh, winter retreat, or I don't know if it's called a winter retreat, but the fearless, the fearless, it's retreat. The fearless retreat. And yeah. I'm actually wearing her fearless shirt today. That How is so funny. I was about to put on the legacy shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Out here supporting our people. I love yes, it. Yes. Um, and so, Marilyn, you did the, the closing session, I believe, mm -hmm. um, yes. and you closed us out with a prayer that touched my spirit. I was, doing, I was doing fine all weekend, you know, suppressing some feelings, and you just broke something inside of me. So Aww. that's something I will always remember, and um, I'm just thankful for you and the anointing that God has put over your life. And so I'm super excited to... Um, let everyone hear about your coaching and your everything that everything that you're doing that's just so wonderful so um i want to know um or maybe we'll close out yeah okay so if you could please marilyn sorry i'm scatterbrained um could you please introduce yourself tell us who you are and what you do currently for work okay so i am marilyn jones i am the founder and owner of b fragrance which is a fragrance and beauty company here out of the chicagoland area there you go. Yes, 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 yes. And the prize goes to Ashley. Yes. So that line that Ashley just showed you, that's my embellish line. That was the first one that I created. So embellish is the, she has the rollerball and the lotion. We also have and the 1.7 ounce and 3.4 ounce bottle. So I'll try to make a short story really, really short. But um, I actually got into fragrance. From a little girl, I grew up with a love of perfumes, and I didn't know why until I was much older. But um, I lost my mother at five mm -hmm. years old. She passed away of breast cancer. So growing up, I had the love for perfumes. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, I realized that I was really chasing the scent of my mom. So sure. I grew up wanting to always create my own perfume. Um, but I didn't go to school to be a chemist. I didn't go to school to do anything in that field or whatever. Um, I went and got my undergrad in business and accounting. And then I started out what was taught to us in a corporate, um, in a corporate space is to get a yeah. good job, retire from it, and live your rest of your life that you have left to live on right. your retirement. So entrepreneur was never something that was taught to me. So, and even now, and I realized that I didn't even have what a lot of entrepreneurs have now with this mm -hmm. access to other people that are right. kind of in the same lane and kind of in the same space. So I was just a girl out here from corporate trying to figure this entrepreneurship thing out. I started with, like I said, the embellish was the first one. I came up with my own mixes in my own kitchen I and it. I took it from kitchen to manufacturing. And six years later, here I am. And um, that so that so, pivoted so exciting. into- yeah, and that pivoted into where I am today, which is the Marilyn Batille brand, which is mm -hmm. a Christian-based coaching program that I offer. Why? Because I felt that there was such a need for it. So as I mentioned, when I was in this space growing up, I mean, you know, not growing up, but coming in as an entrepreneur space, literally mm -hmm. growing up in entrepreneur world, yeah. I didn't have what I wanted, right? And so what I really realized now is that B fragrance was essentially the bait for my purpose. Mm -hmm. So that was the thing for me to get out there and, you know, get to know people and people to know who I am. And then that turned out into this thing where God just began to start using me. Like the journey of the fragrance 
the stories, the struggles, the triumphs that I came over and that taught me how to teach others on what they should do and shouldn't do and how to make God the ultimate CEO of your business, right? So okay. we're all starting out these entrepreneur businesses and we're thinking we're the CEOs. No, mm -hmm. we're the intern and God sure. is the CEO of our businesses. So I love that's that. what that I do. That is beautiful. <laughs> what? That was Thank just so you. poetic. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, Marilyn, when you were a little girl, mm -hmm. um, what did you want to be when you grew up? So and interesting, why? not an accounting, not a finance person, and okay. not even an entrepreneur. Actually, growing up, I wanted, I thought I was going to be a doctor. <laughs> really? And, and why? I, I don't, well, you know, I think what they tell us is that, you know, sometimes you try to figure out, I'm going to do this thing so I can make it better, right? And so I didn't realize all of those things now, and it's just like all these, un this puzzle is just becoming unpuzzled, and I'm putting all of the pieces together where where did I want to be a doctor come from? Mm. And I'm sure it was something that I was hearing or seeing as a little girl growing up with the loss of my mom and right. all of those things that I felt that I wanted to be a doctor or something in that realm so that I can help other people. And then from there, I went. So before I started my undergrad in accounting, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to be a nurse. So then I started this whole nursing thing. I went to get my CNA license. I was about to do my LPN. And then I went and I was at a clinical. And mm -hmm. it was not the great experience that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And it was like I had a bad experience. And I was like, I'm too much of a crybaby. I don't want to see nobody bleeding and hurting. So, yeah, let's scratch this all together. <laughs> and then I just... <laughs> too emotional. Just, yeah. Yeah, it was too much. So I, I, I tabled that and I just, you know, finished out school and went to finance and accounting. And that's what worked for me. So what do you think or what, what, what led you to business? Um, wait, in business and corporate or my entrepreneurial world? No, so um, after the nursing, doctor, nurse, business, like it was what? one of those things. It was like that's what you did. You pick something like you listen to other people around you saying get a job. There will always be a demand for. So it was either a nurse, an accountant, because someone's always mm -hmm. going to need you to count their money. So it was almost like a any many mighty mo type okay. of thing that I chose because I wanted gotcha. job security. I wanted and there to was make sure that that's something that I could retire from and, you know, live happily ever after. Of course. And there was no blood in accounting, so you were okay. I was okay with that. And I like kind of money, too, so that was perfect. <laughs> okay. And so what was the idea of success for you growing up or when you were younger? Well, for me, like, I would say literally, like, I would have to use the example from um, – starting out in an entrepreneur space because mm -hmm. what I thought success was in corporate wasn't the same success I thought once I started an entrepreneur because those two different entities they're mm -hmm. two different windows success in corporate space was get the great job that you can retire from and then you're you're good right you got a job so a financial want... success early yeah. on mm -hmm. early on it was a financial it um, was that. but then okay. it became more of a servant type thing right mm -hmm. getting in a space where you can be a servant to someone else how you can help someone else and that pivoted into like I was saying about the Marilyn Batil brand which is right. a Christian business coaching that I have it's because I really find I'm happy like that brings me my greatest joy even like yeah. when you was just saying like you remember what I said back to you in January you remembered a word from there mm -hmm. That's a reward that you get that's bigger than you because it's not me, essentially. Right. I'm the servant that's being used by God to bless his people. And it's doing it in a way that's not looked and not frowned upon. Right. It's really accepted. Like in this space now, it's like a cool thing to kind of be a church girl. Like it everybody want to yeah. have selfie Sundays. Every It's cool to like, you know, do scriptures. But when I was growing up, like I was called the sanctified girl. I couldn't do anything couldn't leave off the porch where now I'm like, I'm in a space where I'm comfortable and mm -hmm. I get to help other people see the God that I love. And I get to share that to other people. That's success for me. I love that. Um, and so along your journey, um, and I know your faith p plays a major role in this, um, but what um, are the, some of the tips and motivators that you use to keep you chugging along? Oh my gosh, it is my faith. Actually, I mean, there's nothing else. It's my faith first, family second, mm -hmm. and then everything else flows behind that. But 
So I'm not going to sit here and say that we still don't have trying times in business because that's inevitable. That's something that's going to always happen. But even when I hit those roadblocks, mm -hmm. if I can't count on my husband, my family, I know one that I can count on. And I just go to God in prayer and I go to him in worship. And that really, it just silence and it kind of levels everything mm -hmm. else for me from there. And that's where I get that from. I love that. Is there a scripture that you go to um, more than others when you find yourself in a trying time? I know that he would never leave me nor forsake me. And that's the one thing that I would say for sure. And that's what I kind of stand on. Even in the hard times, I have to remind myself mm -hmm. because even the Bible says God said to remind him of his word. So if I have to remind him, surely I have to remind myself that his promises yeah. for me are yes and amen. So amen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what's something that you um, learned or you're still in the process of learning that you wish you had le learned sooner in your career? Oh, gosh. Um, patience. Mm. I'm still learning that. And it's even though, like, you know, the Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing, but sometimes it's the patience, you know, because it's in that waiting period where it's hard. It's in that waiting period where you want to give up because you mm. just don't see that it's working. But I also know that's where God is. And that's why I know where he does his best work is when we think he's not working. That's what I wish I would have learned years ago because I know I jumped ahead of God on a lot of things because mm -hmm. I wanted something, right? And if it wasn't happening when I wanted to happen, I still made the choice to precede him and get the answer that I wanted. And that was an epic failure. But every time what, I'm learn what I've learned is that when I wait on God, it happens in the order. It happens in the way that it was like, this was you, God. This was, gosh, aha moment. Light bulb clicks on. So I, sure. I would have learned that back then, and I would have avoided a lot of mistakes. So is it patience with yourself? Is it patience with others? Is it patience? Um, what is that patience uh, look it's like everything mm -hmm. you know I would say like for me because we're talking business I like I made a lot of mistakes because I was impatient even in business you know there were a lot of things that I did that I could have waited on but I wanted that answer right away and it starts there but patience like is a virtue that we <laughs> lack a lot and yes. it, it really it really transcends to everything because it's not just bucketed where you say I have patience in this but I don't have patience in that if you have that seed of impatience, it's going to follow you in everything. So that's what I wish I would have learned the, um, learned the process and learned the method on how to work it, how to work my, my own patience sure. and not to be anxious for something. I think I would be, I won't say I'll be in a better space, but I think I would have accomplished a lot more that didn't have the results that they had, had I waited. Understood. And that's good. Um, so in the wake of COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, a lot of businesses have had to make some pivots. Mm -hmm. um, you and Melinda teamed up and you guys did your Mother's Day. Um, yes. And then you, uh, you did your, yeah, the collection. You guys did a mm -hmm. um, collaboration box. And then you guys did a virtual ha um, Mother's Day. Yes. Um, what are some things that you find yourself doing now? And I think you're coaching um, yeah. you birth sort of at it during this time as well. Um, what are some of the things that you've seen yourself? Um, or what are some of the things that you, um, you've done during this time to sort of not say re relevant, but reinvent your business? Um, the coaching program, absolutely. That's the that's the biggest thing that was launched over this COVID. Um, and I want to say the coaching program, not the consultant aspect of it, because that I started like two years ago. Okay. So I was doing the coaching, like helping women, um, women in business, just women, you know, that had struggles on trying to understand how to incorporate, you know, God into business, because that's been a struggle where a lot of people can't really figure that method out. So I was doing that, but what I learned was is that I was basically putting more on me than I needed to. So what I did was I took those one-on-ones and mm -hmm. basically bulk them into a class setting. And that was something that was birthed out of COVID because I had time to think about what can I do right. differently? How mm -hmm. can I maximize my time and my wealth being smart? And then that whole patience thing. So <laughs> that was definitely the biggest thing that I can say that's been birthed out of COVID and of course just still, you know, um, working with other women and just 
even the reward of just seeing how God has been moving and not just my life but my friend's life and just being a witness to that during this whole COVID process has been a reward for me because I know where they come from. So, right. you know, I don't know if you know, but yeah, you do. So a year and a half ago, God put on my heart to start this prayer group that I do every Monday morning at 830. I'm going to wake up one, one morning, morning early <laughs> enough to do it. I'm going to set an alarm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> I started that a year and a half ago. And so what I know and what I really, really believe, and I stand on this, that God would never put more on you than you can bear it. So believe it or not, I'm really shy. And no. so, <laughs> and so when God really put that seed in my heart to start a prayer group, and it was just, you know, my girlfriends, it was just us, us women in business, you know, we had our own little group and I talked to a few of them and I'm like, God's put on my heart to start this prayer group. And I, what he was really doing was he was stretching me because in that mm-hmm. stretch where you're uncomfortable, that's when these great things come out of it. Yeah. So the seed was planted for this whole coaching um, process a year and a half ago he didn't tell me that I was gonna have a coaching program where I was gonna basically be talking to women um, entrepreneurs and basically just helping them with their godly principles helping them to be bold in their faith and all of these things so he gave me a little bit at a time and then it turned into this big beautiful flower that I'm enjoying being in so yeah it's 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 been amazing this is exciting and so one of the things that um, I think truly inspired me um, in the during the retreat was mm-hmm. that it was you, Monique. Like there was a group of you guys who had decided to all come together, mm-hmm. and I was just so excited and refreshed to see your your relationship with one another. Mm-hmm. And so my question that I have for you now is like, um, do you have a like a personal um, like who's who's in your tribe and maybe not necessarily like their names but like do are you do you have someone who is like a prayer warrior or like well, who are some of like maybe three positions or you know that you think is important to have to keep you um afloat yeah so um so i think if you ask anybody that's in my tribe they're gonna point the finger to me for the prayer warrior part they're gonna like <laughs> go to maryland for that <laughs> But then you need some um, some pushers, right? Some accountability partners. So people to wake you up when you feel down and despair. You need somebody that's going to inspire you and push you and motivate you to continue for greatness despite what you see. What you see may be saying that you can't do this because you don't have the access. You can't do this because you don't have the education. But having another friend that said, you can do all things through Christ that strengthen you, me, telling you that, that'll encourage you or for another friend to be someone that's that pusher that all you see them do is grind all you see them do is hustle you see them just go non-stop you're the one that's saying slow down like (laughs) i I want you here around a long time i think those are core people that you need in your life because those accountability partners they push you when you like i said um when you feeling like you want to give up having that friend that's going to be that person that push you that's really what I feel that would be an important part of the tribe. I'm, I mean, you know my tribe, but. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And you have, yes, your tribe is dope. Um, <laughs> and so that's, I think, why I was sort of wondering, like, okay, I got to recruit. I got to recruit. Yeah, you got to recruit. For, for, for my squad. But my squad is pretty dope, too. Yeah. Um, that social circle is everything. You it have is. to be mindful of the company you keep. And if it wasn't so, God wouldn't put it in his word. To be careful of the company you keep because evil communication corrupt good manner. And people mm. thinking like that's in everything. You can be mm-hmm. hanging around somebody that's a, you know, a laxy lazy that's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm okay. You know, I have this. You know, they're not go getters. Or someone that's that Debbie Downer or that negative Nelly consistently. Like every time mm-hmm. you talk to this person, you right. leave feeling so heavy because there's yep. nothing positive. There's nothing inspiring. There's nothing motivating you to push you to want to do better. So when you look and do an inventory on your social circle, that should change you. That should motivate you. And if you are the best in your circle, I think you need to still figure out another circle because what continues to push you if you're already at the top. So you want to keep striving for the best. You still want to strive for success. You still want to contend for greater. But just being comfortable with a group that's 
comfortable with not doing anything, you might want to reevaluate it. Not to necessarily say you discontinue them and you disbarred them from being your friend, friend but yeah. it's just a changing of your environment so that you can continue to be the best that God had for you. That's so important. I think a lot of times as we grow, it's, um, it's hard when the people who you want to grow with you aren't growing at the same oh, rate. Oh, yes. And it's like, no, but just come on. Like, let's just oh, do it together. I want to do it. I want and... to do it. Let's do it together. And I have so many of those stories that I had to experience. And it was kind of like, you know, it's hard because you feel like, like, these are my friends. Like, you want them to come with you. But mentally, they don't have the capacity to go in. Everywhere you go, God is not telling you to come with that group of people. Mm -hmm. It could be another group that he's going to extend, have you extend your hand to pull up. But mentally, everybody isn't equipped for where God is taking you. And sometimes you have to travel alone. But he'll have people in your place, in your path to continue to like fill the voids, fill the emptiness where these other friends would do for you. God would just bring you like my complete tribe in the last six years is completely different from who my tribe was 10 years ago. Do I still associate with the ones from 10 years ago? Yeah, those are still my girls. But when it comes to that elevate me in my mind you know we have in the same morals we have the same values we have the same in the business space we, right. we're the same in our walk in christ like that's who you need to keep around you because they have the same space when we say let's pray let's go everybody not what are we praying for you want to fast again <laughs> like no, no 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 i don't need nobody like that i need somebody yeah. let's do it let's go let's go absolutely that is so good and so important so thank you for sharing that um so, Marilyn, I want to keep talking to you. I'm trying to think I of know, another question. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of another question to ask you. So, you know, um, I've adopted you and Brianna. I call you guys my little baby sissy. So, like, I too. just love y'all spirit. And you. you guys just met. So, like, Brianna, I've been knowing her. Like, she's been my little baby sis. But now you, <laughs> you've adopted into, like, yes. we call you baby sis, too. I appreciate it. I love it. I'm so um, inspired by, like I said, by you and just how I see you pivoting and I see your friend group and I see what you guys are all doing. And so I'm incredibly inspired and thankful that you're sharing your story with us today. Um, hey, Nicole is also <laughs> in the group. Um, you guys are so dope. Um, so Marilyn. Okay, so let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. As um, someone who is, I won't say newly on my walk, but like, you know, sometimes I'm skipping, sometimes I'm running, sometimes I'm crawling, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so um, I think sometimes it's also difficult trying to find people who are all on that path with you as well. Um, so if you could share some maybe encouraging words um, to just sort of stay the course with your relationship um, and building your relationship with God, knowing that you have uh, you have some flaws and that you might have backslid once or 20 Twice. times. <laughs> <laughs> Twice, 20, you know, same, same difference. Tomato, um, tomato. <laughs> what are some uh, encouraging words you can share with us who are still sort of not figuring it out, but uh, sorting it out? Continue to fight and continue to contend for the faith. Like, don't give up because um, you feel like you failed, right? So the goal is to press toward the mark of the high calling. And you can't do that if you get distracted on your past. See, God comes not to basically um, condemn you. He chastises you because the mm -hmm. Bible tells us that he chastises those that he loves. There's no different than the mom and the dad you know, spanking or putting their kid in time out. It doesn't mean that they don't love them. It doesn't mean that they won't forgive them of their sins or, you know, for the mistake that they made, just like a child. Mm -hmm. That's what God does. Now, the enemy, on the other hand, he comes to condemn you. Mm -hmm. He comes to make you feel that you are not even worthy of a second chance. He comes to make sure his whole plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. What is that? That's destroying your hope to make you feel like I shouldn't even try again because I've messed up so much. But if you let the enemy win, then you feel victim to his prey. Mm -hmm. And God said it in his word that my sheep know my voice. A stranger they won't follow. So that even when the enemy comes with his tickle and stuff in, his, in your ear trying to remind you of something, that something you did wrong or something that you did ba bad, you just say, but my God is mighty. And his mighty. mercy and his grace is ever sufficient for me. And that you know that he said he would be with you even until the end of time. And even in this season, he's with us in our mistakes. He knew he was going to make mistakes because we are imperfect people. There's no one perfect but him. 
So our job is to continue to realize that those are mistakes that we're making and then turn from them. So our goal is to making sure that we're not basically a practice practice center, but basically like, oh God, um, I know you told me I'm not supposed to be fornicating, but oh well, in the morning I'm <laughs> gonna say, forgive me, you're practicing. <laughs> You going in with the mindset like that's premeditated. You right, thought right, about right. apologizing before you did it, and that's not like wrong. But you know, we all fall. You know, mm -hmm. we're not perfect. But your goal should be to really strategize you and pivot you from those same things that you were comfortable doing. Not along the way, may you trip, may you fall into something else. You may, right? Because we all do. Right. But just to keep the focus and don't be distracted by the enemy when he try to condemn you with reminding you of the sins and mistakes or whatever that you did. Thank you. That's good. That's good. Just keep, good. keep going. Press forward. <laughs> and don't practice. Don't, don't, don't premeditate. Don't be a practicing center. Yeah, yes. don't premeditate. You know, that's a crime. You know, that's like first degree. <laughs> what, you, mm. When it's premeditated, that's right. bad. Like third right. degree is kind of like, oh, you kind of really didn't mean to do it, but God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, God. <laughs> you are so right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you, spoke, you spoke a lot of good words in that. Um, um, Marilyn, I, again, want to thank you and look forward to the world opening back up. Um, can you please share with us um, your next class or how you're, when we can sign up for your um, coaching program, okay. when you're dropping new fragrances, where, where can we find you on the web? What, what you got going on? Okay, so you can find me on the web at um, bfragrance.com, and we can put that in the comment section later. Yep. It's bfragrance.com, so that's for the Fragrance and Beauty Company, and then for the Marilyn Batil brand. So for those of you that are young in your entrepreneur walk, or you just started out, or you started out and you just decided to do something completely different, and this time around, you want God to be the ultimate CEO of your business, and you want to know, how can I do this, and how do I apply biblical principles for modern days processes then that's when you want to reach out to Marilyn Batil and that's at MarilynBatil.com and on there there is a page where you could um kind of it's, I think it's under book me or consult but then I have the uh if it it could be something that you only need for an hour so I have an hour session if you okay. need two hours so the prices are out there for whatever you need but if you need something that's a little bit more long term then I do um, structure custom bundle packages okay. to make sure that each person is getting what they need. So my coaching program, that's a 10-week series, and we're all already five weeks into it. And so I'll be starting up the new one in August. So okay. this one ends in July, and then we'll be starting up the new one. But aside from that, we continue to do the one-on-ones, and it's just depending on what you need and what your needs are. And I'll be here to help you guys. Perfect. Um, so, Marilyn, my last question of the night. Well, actually, thank not you, my last Cancer question. Love. Yes, that's the, um, uh, she dropped it for me. That's the um, link tree to any bookings. And I, um, I pinned it. Um, oh. and then I also, I'll put it in the, um, I'll put it in the show notes. Okay. Um, Renee, aka India. I'm not sure uh, if you, you know her from uh, Mayo yes, University. Yes, 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 Mayo yes. University. She wants I know, to know. I know the names. I know the names. <laughs> I know you mean see y'all. So I, I, look, Auntie Mo, she be having me laugh. I'm like, I'm almost picking, you know, like who's going to be what position in the university. I'm like, she's this, like, I'm yes. learning y'all. I'm learning you. <laughs> they, I love them. Um, they go hard for my own. I they love do. Them. I love them too. They're funny. And I just love the way they love my friends. So I'm with y'all. As long as y'all with my friend, I'm with y'all. So. <laughs> I love it. So she wants to know, um, is there going to be another tea party? Um, yeah. So we're going to think about doing something. We're going to do it a little different. And uh, we always working on something because we, you know, we always silly and just trying to figure out something to do fun. So yeah. we haven't really figured out exactly what that is. Okay. But just follow myself and those girls and I'm sure we'll be having something else fun and we'll invite you guys. So Can't we used wait. to just do our stuff private, like just us, our group of friends, but then we was like, let's open it up to the world. Let's open it up to our new friends. You know, we have new family. I love so I love when it. we I love do, it. I promise you, um, in, in, in what you said that was India. India. Mm -hmm. in, AKA in, Renee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll let you guys know. Perfect. So my last question of the night, 
is um, I am the amateur expert and I claim to know a little bit about a lot. So oh. if you could please um, share with me a random tidbit of information, a fun fact, um, or an inspirational quote or anything that you feel inspired to, to, to share that I can say, Marilyn taught me that. Oh, something that I can teach you? Or, hmm. Um, uh, you got me, girl. You got me, girl. You got me, girl. It could um, be anything. It could be um, a tip for um, starting out business. It could be um, just like a random Snapple fact. It could be... Um, I don't know. Um, Anything random, interesting. It could be a quote. It could be a um, a Bible passage. It I could was gonna be... say interesting about uh, interesting fun fact about me. I don't know if it's fun, but it's an interesting fact that most people are like, "What, really?" So I'm number eleven of twelve kids, and I have over a hundred nieces and nephews. So that's a fun fact. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So. That is. That is. That is a fun fact. That is. That is. We can have our own party. We have our own clubs. We have our own basketball team. Everything. Own, like, you know, we can, you know, pack a stadium. Yeah. <laughs> Someone asked what your favorite scripture is. Um, let's see. My favorite, favorite. Um, I don't want to say this is my favorite, but it really reminds me on uh, who God is. Romans 10 and 9. And that just, you know, for us to continue, you know, to repent for our sins and believe that God raised him from the dead, that we shall be saved. And I believe that I say, I say it, it sticks with me, it's mm -hmm. burdened in me, it's anchored in me. So like I say, regardless on what comes up against you, I'm knowing who my savior is, who died on the cross for my sins. And I can repeat that and believe it in my heart that Jesus is Lord, then I'm a-okay. So mm -hmm. regardless okay. on what the world is saying, I know who my God is, so. That makes me happy. That's Thank Romans you. 10 and 9. It's really just like for people who are trying to get their life right to God, like you really just basically accepting him as your personal saver, believing that he rose from the dead, that you too shall be saved. And so for those of you who are looking a little bit more for God, I challenge you to, you know, go read Romans 10 and 9. It'll help you. You start seeing it every day, every day. And like I said, even when the enemy comes, because he will come. You know, the Bible didn't say he would come. He said those weapons would be formed. He said they wouldn't prosper, though. So mm -hmm. even when he's forming, you remind him of who, not who you are, but whom you are. Oh, you God. are a king's kid. Your father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. There's nothing that you can't have. He said you have the power to get wealth. You have the power to live life of, of abundance. And that's what you're going to do just because of who your father is. I love it. Marilyn, can you close us out in a prayer? Absolutely. Because I love you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, do you want me to pray for you for something sp specific or just do a group general prayer? We can do a group general prayer. I'll call okay. you for my prayer request later. Got you, girl. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you, Lord God. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in Ashley's heart, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for meeting every need of every woman attached to this line, Lord God. You see the unspoken requests. You see the unspoken tears, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that you just go and you clean up that thing, Lord God. Burn up anything that's in us that's not representative of you, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that you, Lord God, be with us, Lord God, that you be our protectant, that you be our shield, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for you being who you are, Lord God. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end, the first and the last, Lord God. I thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider. I thank you, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Nisi. You reign victory, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for your your miracle signs and wonder. I thank you, Lord God, that you said that you will contend with those who contend with you, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, for being with us, Lord God. When you see us, Lord God, don't see our sins, Lord God. See the blood of the lamb, the blood of your son, Lord God. And I thank you, Father, for forgiving us, Father. Forgive us of that thing, Lord God, that we do knowingly and unknowingly, Lord God. Burn up anything, Lord God, in us, Lord God. If you see anything in us, Lord God, please get rid of it, Father. If it stinks in your nostrils, Lord God, let it be sickening into us, oh God. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing, Lord God. I thank you for causing peace 
peace in this pandemic, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for causing peace in our nation, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for just going and touch the heart of the brokenhearted, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, Father. I thank you for being blessed, Lord God, to us, Lord God, even though we may not be deserving of your favor, of your grace, of your mercy, Lord God. I thank you that you are Jehovah Gaborah, Lord God, and I say thank you. I say thank you for your will and your way, Father. I thank you, Father, for giving us clean clarity, Lord God, and our purpose with you, Lord God, and our purpose on this side of the earth, Father. I thank you, Father, for just giving us strength and activities of our land, Father. Thank you for continuing to wake us up, Lord God, with life, breath, and strength in our body. I thank you, Father, for our sound mind, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing, even in the atmosphere, Father. I thank you for your strength, Lord God. I thank you for what you're doing in this space, Lord God. Continue to raise up, Lord God, Esther's in this season. Continue to raise up roots, Lord God, I thank you. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for snatching us from the mouth of the enemy, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for snatching the keys of depression from the enemy, Lord God. I thank you that depression will not sit on, sit on anyone connected to this line, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Go out and do what only you can, Lord God, so that others can see the manifestation of your faith, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. I thank you for your strength, Lord God, for the weekend. I thank you, Lord God, that you said for us to cast all of our cares on you so that you will give us rest. I thank you for the rest in this season, Father. I thank you for lifting the burden because you said your yoke is easy and your burden is light. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord God, that we are the lenders and not the borrowers, Lord God. I thank you for sending financial wealth, Father. I thank you that everybody that's attached to this call, you would do a special blessing, Lord God, into their bank accounts, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, Lord God. I thank you for new connections in this in this season, Father. I thank you for the connection, Father. I thank you for the connection. Just begin to type in your captions. Thank you for the new connection. Thank you for the new blessings. Thank you for sprinkling your favor, Lord God, that runs deeper than the deep waters of river. I thank you, Father, for the overflow, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for the impact and increase in this season. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing, Lord God. We have not because we ask not, and we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that you give us the very thing that we are in need of, Lord God. That thing, Lord God, that only you know of, Father. I thank you for touching, Lord God. I thank you for delivering, Lord God. I thank you for all your signs and wonders, even in this day, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that despite what we see, Lord God, that's happening in our nation, you are God, and you are God alone, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, that everything that's happened, nothing caught you by surprise, Father. And even though, Lord God, it looks like it's so bad and so disruptive, Lord God, but you are causing double for the trouble and I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for the new birth and the new processes. I thank you for the new procedures and the new posture. I thank you, Father, for the riches, Lord God, that will come into your sons and daughters. I thank you, Lord God. We give you all praises, all honor and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Get you a Marilyn to pray <laughs> for you, honey. <laughs> thank what? you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank I love you so much. I love you too, Ash. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I hope that you were blessed by this episode. Please, please, please watch the recap. Send it to your friends. And um, if you are in business, reach out to Marilyn. Um, she will lead you to where you need to go. So, yes. whew. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Marilyn. I pray you, you guys all have a great night. And we'll see you on Friday. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye.